What we're going to be looking at is calculating the anti-dilution of earnings per share here for stock options or stock warrants and the effect that they have on the earnings per share of the company here. And for our example, Corporation A's earnings per share is based on uh, one here. The net income for the year is 500000 and they have stock warrants outstanding. They have 30000 of them, each exercisable for one share of common stock at $30 per share. So they can, for each warrant here, they can buy one common stock here at $30 per share. And the common stock outstanding for the, uh, during the year here was 100,000 shares here. And the average market price here, the common stock during the year was $25 per share. So what we're going to be looking at here, the stock warrants, they can exercise them here at $30 per share here, but the average uh, market price for common stock is $25 per share. Okay, so let's look at this delusion versus anti-delusion of earnings per share. Now this is where a company includes the diluted earnings per share for stock options or warrants, and we're going to be looking at warrants here, uh, that are outstanding here. Unless they are anti-dilutive, then they would not be included in their earning, diluted earnings per share. Okay, so we have these, this situation here with stock options and warrants that are outstanding. Either A, they can be uh, have a delusion here to the earnings per share, or they can be anti-dilutive to the earnings per share. So first, with the diluted earnings per share, and we're, not, we're just by definition here, this is where the excise price is less than the market price. And by doing that, if you if we go through the calculations, you are going to increase the number of shares of common stock, which is going to reduce the earnings per share here. Now, in that case here, we would be including the diluted earnings per share as reported in our financial statements. But what we're going to be going over here is really the case here where we got anti-diluted earnings per share. This is where the excise price is greater than the market price. So with an anti-dilution, you're going to reduce the common stock outstanding and you're going to increase that by doing that, you're going to increase the earnings per share. And we're going to go through that calculation so you can see how that's done here and how that affects our earnings per share. And uh, in that case, you would not include uh, those uh, uh, stock warrants here in your diluted earnings per share that's reported in your financial statement. And we're going to be using this treasury stock method here to make our calculations. Again, for our example, our excise price excise price here on those warrants is $30 uh, per share here, and the market price of a common stock is $25 per share here. So the, in this case, the warrants are anti-dilutive by our definition here, where the excise price, exercise price here is greater than the market price. So let's go up and look at our calculation here. Okay, so this is where we're going to use this treasury stock method, and we'll just go through the, uh, the logic here for calculating those warrants and, uh, warrants and how they would be issued here and how they would affect the uh, diluted earnings per share here. Now, this is where you assume that the warrants are exercised at the beginning of the year here or at the date of issue if it's later, but we're going to be looking at the, as of the beginning of the year here. So, number one, we start with our warrant shares here. Well, we had 30,000 uh, warrants here and you could, for one share common stock, so they would there that would get equate to 30,000 shares here of common stock. And the warrants price per share is $30 here. So $30 times the total number of shares of common stock or the warrants here would uh, would equal $900,000. So that's what we'd receive here if all those warrants were exercised. Those would be the proceeds here if all the warrants were exercised, all 30,000 of them, at that warrant price here of $30 per share. Okay, so now we look at our average market price here for common stock, and that is $25 per share. So that's what we have to use for uh, determining whether these, uh, in this case, the warrants are anti-dilutive, but that's what we have to compare to the warrant price here. So you can see here, our warrant price here, $30, is greater than the uh, average market price here $25 per share. So, okay, so now let's say we're going to, this is where this treasury stock method comes into play. So the treasury stock that could be repurchased with the proceeds here, we got $900,000 proceeds here had all those warrants been exercised. And with the, that is where we, this market price comes into play. We have $25 per share here, of the market price here in those common stocks. So dividing uh, 900,000 by the $25 per share or market price, you could buy back 36,000 shares here of treasury stock stock uh, with those warrants. Okay, so this is where the 36,000 shares here, let's assume were bought back by the company, so those would be taken out of circulation here. But 
what we have to do is we have to look at the excess of the treasury stock over the Warren shares here that are repurchased. Now, in this case, we would have issued 30,000 shares here of uh, common stock for the warrants that would have been uh, exchanged here or exercised and but we would have had to buy with the treasury stock method we'd have had to buy back 36,000 shares of uh, common stock here and, and hold them as treasury stock so you can see the difference here we have a net decrease here in the number of shares that would be outstanding by 6,000 simply the difference here so we would have issued 30,000 shares but we'd have had to buy back 36,000 so here negative 6,000 shares and that's what you call the incremental shares so now this is where we take our average common stock outstanding those were those hundred thousand shares that were outstanding for the year here and and based on our incremental negative incremental amount here of 6,000 that's the difference here between what we issued in for the common stock for the warrants and what we bought back here as treasury stock so netting those amount out our total uh, common stock here plus these potential common stock that would be with those warrants here is simply the difference here 94,000 shares of common stock so we reduced our common stock with the where the by 6,000 here the number of total common stock that we'd be using for our calculation for our earnings per share okay so now for our net income for the year was 500,000 here and dividing that by the total common stock here after our after our warrants here where, where they're anti-dilute of 94,000 shares we're going to get earnings per share here of five dollars and 32 cents okay so going through our logic up above here that we went through we could have just used our regular equation here to determine those incremental number of shares that's simply where you take the market price here subtract the warrant price from it divide it by the market price and then you take it times the number of warrants here and that's going to give you your number of shares here for your uh, calculating your diluted earnings per share so going through that equation here well our market price here was twenty five dollars per share Warren price here was thirty dollars per share so you can see right away we have a negative number here a negative uh, five dollars per share here subtracting the two then you just divide it by the market price here of twenty five dollars per share take it time the number of warrants that we have here thirty thousand warrants so we come up with the number of shares here um, negative six thousand shares here simply because our market price here was less than the warrant price so that's the mechanics we'd go through here to determine the number of shares okay so now to our determine our earnings per share here which is going to be a anti-dilutive here so we take our net income for the year here and then we divide it by the uh, average number of common shares outstanding plus those potential shares that would be uh, converted here exercised based on those warrants here so just with our equation here we had our net income of 500,000 for the year here plus we had those average number of common shares outstanding 100,000 but now we have to add in those potential shares which is a negative 6,000 shares here that we calculated so uh, the difference here would give us that 94,000 divide that into the net income of 500,000 you get that five dollars and 32 cents per share okay so what we have to do what the reason we know that's anti-dilutive here is we have to compare it to the earnings per share here without those warrants so in that case without the warrants we would have had net income here of 500,000 here and divided by the number of common stock or average number of shares outstanding of a hundred thousand so we're going to come up with our earnings per share here at five dollars per share comparing that to what we would have uh, our earnings per share here uh, based on the fact if we included those warrant shares in here if those potential shares here which was a, actually a negative 6,000 shares had we included that we would have reduced the number of shares that are outstanding here based on what we would have had here without the warrants so that increases our earnings per share here from uh, five dollars per share here without those warrants and uh, up to five dollars and 32 cents here with the warrants and that's anti-dilutive now you can see here that the earnings per share is inflated here with a less number of shares outstanding and that is not permissible per the rules and regulations here so you can't include those warrants in your calculation so um, just going down here the warrants inflate our earnings per share it's considered anti-dilutive and are excluded from the earnings per share computation when we do that at the end of the year here for the company so you can see the logic here the um, 
we issued uh, we would have had to issue based on the warrants if the warrants were all exercised we would have had to issue 30,000 shares of common stock but using that treasury stock method we would have bought would have been able to buy back 36,000 shares so we got that negative 6,000 shares here 6,000 more shares sitting in treasury stock than what we would have issued here uh, for the warrants so that's where that that's where when we that's how we have to figure our earnings per share here based on the anti-dilutive earnings per share we have to go back and we have to figure what our anti-dilutive earnings or what our dilutive earnings per share would have been here with those warrants and then we compare it to without the warrants here and you can see without the warrants we had a lesser uh, per share uh, earnings per share here than with the warrants and that's not and if that's the case here then you can't include the warrants in your number of shares outstanding so earnings per share was inflated by doing that so with the less number of shares outstanding here and that's not permissible so that's where that's how we go about calculating here to determine if those uh, warrant if the warrants or we could also be looking at uh, stock options same as uh, options or warrants they work both work the same here in our example we went through warrants just remember here if you inflate the earnings per share when you include the warrants or the stock options that would be exercised uh, over what it wouldn't be here without including them then you can't include them in your earnings per share here at the when you're calculating it for your financial reporting at the end of the year